I don't think I've ever started a funeral service off with such a cool song, um, but, uh, but it was Roseanne picked a good one, and it celebrates such an awesome truth that Jesus Christ died and rose again so that we can rise again for all of eternity and have eternal life because of him. Well, um, at this time, Bob, would you come and would you start us off by reading the obituary for us? Thank you, Rob, or Bob. Roseanne Lorraine, Nate Treader Zinke, age 69, of Berlin, Wisconsin, was called to her eternal home, freed of pain to find peace in the arms of Jesus. Monday evening, October 25, 2021, at her home following a one-year courageous battle with pancreatic cancer. She was born on February 1, 1952, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, the oldest of seven children born to Harry and Irene Borowski Treader. 
Roseanne attended schools in Princeton, Wisconsin, graduating as valedictorian of Princeton High School in 1970. She earned her Bachelor of Science registered nurse degree from the University of Wisconsin, Madison in 1976. On June 2nd, 1973, she married John P. Zinke. They lived in Madison and then moved to Stockton, California in November of 1987. Roseanne held positions in nursing and had also worked as an infection control coordinator and quality control manager with Kaiser Permanente in California. John worked in the agricultural equipment field. The couple moved back to Wisconsin in November of 2018. Roseanne had a strong faith. She loved worship music and sharing her faith in Jesus with others. She was a voracious reader who also enjoyed boating, water skiing, fishing, playing wordscapes, custom card making, gardening, and being a Green Bay Packer fan. She is survived by her loving husband of 48 years, John P. Zinke of Berlin, her mother, Irene Treder of Princeton, her siblings, Robert Marlene Treder, Rita Dave Rennert, Romaine Gordon Gortz Goretzky Borzik, Roslyn Mark Evans, and Richard Jennifer Treder. Brothers and sisters in law, Doug Freeman, Jeanette Daling, Lori Jim Petruska, Mary Jane, Bill Schmudlock, Mike Zinke, Claudia Malcolm Childs, many cousins, nieces, nephews, other relation, and special friends. She was preceded in death by her father, Harry Treder, one sister, Ruth Treder Freeman, niece, Robin Treder, father and mother-in-law, John L. and Jane Zinke, two brothers-in-law, Kevin Rogers and Eugene Daling, beloved pets, Cinder, Angie, Scooter, Molly, Squeaky, and Kelly. A celebration of life for Roseanne Elzinki will be held on Saturday, November 13th at 11 a.m. with visitation beginning at 10.30 a.m. at River Shores Church, 253 South Church Street, Berlin. Pastor Casey Getz will officiate. The service will be live streamed on River Shores Church of Berlin Facebook page. Private graveyard services were held at Richford Cemetery of Roma, rural Coloma. Please visit our website at www.wachholz, which is W-A-C-H-H-O-L-L-Z, and sons.com to send a condolence or to share a memory of Roseanne with her family. Thank, thank you very much. Good job, Bob. That's not easy to do. Well, I think at this time, let's have a couple more tributes, if we could. And so... Um, Jennifer, would you be willing to come at this time and, um, and read the tribute from Roseanne's mother? Thank you so much. At one time, Mother Teresa of Calcutta said that we will be judged on the love we put in our work not in the number of good deeds we perform or by the number of diplomas we receive. How appropriate in a, a quote to describe the passion and years dedicated to nursing and infection control, as well as the love Roseanne displayed when she spent many unknown hours perfecting her custom cards with artistic detail, scripture readings, and a personal touch that blessed all those who received one of her cards. They are a treasure and a reminder of the love she has given to us. It was a blessing that Roseanne could be home the last four years, but especially this past year, so we could all shower her with the love that only letters and phone calls and visits could express in the past. To hug her, to laugh with her, to cheer her on. <laughs> To 
love her in person is a time to now forever treasure. Her hearts will now love her from afar, comforted in the belief that she is now enveloped by God's love without pain. And with Harry, Ruthie, and Robin, enjoying God's heaven with her, we love you. And we miss you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. You know, um, Roseanne shared that one of the things that she was saddest about when she got cancer was just not wanting to hurt her mom. It wanted to stay alive and bless her mom. And so um, she just loved you so much. And thank you for that beautiful tribute. All right, at this time, Yvette, would you like to come, Yvette Cleary, and uh, share a tribute. Thank you so much. It is both an honor and a privilege to be here today giving tribute to Roseanne in celebration of her eternal life. My name is Yvette Clary, and God introduced my husband Scott and I to Roseanne and John in a very special way 12 years ago. As Scott and I were desperately seeking to find a spirit-led church that we could call home, we visited Lifesong Church in Stockton. As we wandered through the parking lot towards the entrance to the church, John was actually the first person to introduce himself to us and welcome us to Lifesong. Just before the service started, Scott and I entered the church and sat down, and we knew without a doubt there was no coincidence that the very seats we chose sat us right next to Roseanne. The fact that Roseanne and John were the first two people we met in two different places at church that day made us realize that our friendship didn't happen by chance, it was meant to be. In those early years of getting to know both Roseanne and John, we spent so many memorable moments together that they quickly became an extension of our family. We created our own summer traditions together as Rojan, Roseanne and John opened their hearts of hospitality, not only to Scott and I, but to multiple members of our family and friends. We always look forward to our weekend barbecues, fun in the sun with their dinghy and jet ski out on their boat at Willowburn Marina on the Delta. And during these times together, we shared incredible conversations filled with love and laughter. To be honest, Roseanne is probably responsible for many of the laugh lines on my cheeks and eyes that have formed over the last 12 years because she alone could make us laugh so hard until we cried. One time, she bought all of us girls beautiful wraparound skirts that tied at the hip with tassels of dangling jewels. They reminded me of belly dancing skirts, only shorter. Every year, she insisted that we bring our skirts and all wear them together while we dance the day away at the opening and closing season harbor parties. Our skirts bedazzled us, sparkling and bright enough to draw everyone's attention, which made me laugh uncontrollably with embarrassment. But that's what made it so much fun for Roseanne, and she was always up to something fun. She could have honestly made a career as a comedian, her spontaneous comments at just the right moment in time became inside jokes we would repeat and laugh about for years to come. We will forever remember how she never hesitated to find something hilarious to say to the random people passing by and her heartfelt apologies to all the poor fishies that she caught because she insisted on baiting her hook with perfectly grilled prime rib and the epic time that she sang at the top of her lungs the entire theme song to the Phantom of the Opera in the late night hours while we were anchored out in the middle of the Delta. She never ceased to amaze me, especially on our birthdays, when she would wait until the perfect time to call and then form a trio with John and Molly, their dog, 
to sing us an unforgettable birthday song in every octave imaginable. I'm truly grateful for every one of those songs that went to voicemail so I can listen to them every year on my birthday. We had such a close relationship with Roseanne and John that the name John naturally became dad and we became like their son and daughter. But Roseanne always made us laugh the way she would insist we were never, ever to call her mom, <laughs> especially in public, because she was still coloring her hair, <laughs> and it made her feel way beyond her years. So we mutually agreed on Rosie. However, I will always remember the last day we spent with her before she moved from California to Wisconsin. And after giving me a hug, she lovingly looked at me and said, you can call me mom if you want to. She said it with such sweet sincerity. She wasn't joking this time. I could tell by the look in her eye that she really meant it, and it touched my heart. Over the past few years, because we lived so far away in California, we weren't able to spend as much time with Roseanne, but she always found a way to be a constant presence in our lives. She kept in touch with us across the miles through group texts, and always reached out to me personally when she knew I was encountering struggles in my own life. She was always checking in on me. She had a great gift for encouraging others. I'm not sure she realized how much it meant to Scott and I when she would spend so much of her time creating us those custom handmade cards for special occasions that would always include heartfelt notes of love and encouragement from her. Each card always came with a little gift inside, a laminated scripture verse that she had colored herself so creatively detailed in the form of a bookmark or mini postcard keepsake. Every single one had a little post-it note on the back of it with a personal message communicating why that verse reminded her of us, our friendship, or why she felt we should have that particular verse at this specific time in our lives. Each of these priceless gifts from her to ours, from her heart to ours, is a perfect reflection of the way she invested in the lives of others. After her cancer diagnosis, when we would travel to Wisconsin to visit, we quickly realized that although Rosie couldn't offer us the same quantity of time that we were able to spend with Dad, she gave us amazing quality time. I think she knew how precious time with her was to us, so even on her not-so-best days, she would surprise us and depend upon the grace of God to give her the strength, energy, and endurance she needed so that she could chat with us after our arrival from California late in the evening, spend the day interacting with family and friends at the Zinke family reunion, enjoy a double date out with us at a local winery for a concert, or wake herself up early for a family brunch. She would do this for all of us, even in the midst of her overwhelming physical challenges. She found a way to create memorable moments together. Rosie has been such a special part of our lives, and she always will be. To Scott and I, Rosie was our friend, our confidant, our encourager, our spiritual mom. We could never imagined that 12 years ago, she would come into our hearts and become someone we would love more than words can ever attempt to express. Because of Rosie, there's a scripture verse in the word of God that has taken on a very specific meaning to me. It is 2 Corinthians 9.15, which reads, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Because I truly believe that Rosie is one of the most precious gifts God has ever given to our lives. And our hearts will be eternally grateful for every memorable moment he has given us to cherish. She may be gone from our sight, but she remains in our hearts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Not Jennifer. Yvette. Yvette. At this time, we will listen to another song that Roseanne picked out. It's a wonderful song called Reckless Love. In case you're wondering about that line, leaves the 99, Jesus had told a little parable in the Bible about a shepherd who had 100 sheep, and he was caring for 100, but then he realized that one of them had, was gone. And so he left the 99 
to go find the one that was fall, falling in a pit somewhere or having a big problem. And, and Jesus compared himself to that shepherd and said, that's the kind of love he has for each and every last one of us, that he will go after us and find us and, and save us. That's why he died on that cross. Um, and so what wonderful love our, our Heavenly Father has for us. What a great song Roseanne picked out. Let's, uh, let's keep going here with a few more tributes that um, if we could have Bob and Marty come at this time and, and uh, share a few things. Thank you, guys. This is scary. <laughs> okay. I'm going to hold it because I'm going to use my glasses anyway, even though it's big writing. And it's my handwriting, so if you know me, it's not always easy to read. <laughs> um, Roseanne had said that our daughter, Robin, had set the bar pretty high for how to handle life with cancer. Neither Roseanne or Robin ever complained or said, why me, after being diagnosed. <clears throat> I remember that day almost a year ago when all the Treader siblings were gathered together at the park. Roseanne broke the news to us. She said that she had no fear about dying. Her faith was strong. She knew we should, she would spend eternity with Jesus. And she is. Roseanne, you leaped over that bar that Robin set and are sharing laughs with her and the rest of our angels in heaven. One thing I have to ask is, so I know Roseanne wasn't too happy when mom brought me home from the hospital when I was born. <laughs> as far as I can tell, I received a teddy bear, which I didn't really know I had because Roseanne, I think it was part of the toll for having me come into the household. <laughs> but it was probably maybe a year after you moved back to Wisconsin and the closest I ever got to it was probably four feet away, and she says, you'll never tear this out of my hand. <laughs> but then, after I looked at it, I thought, man, you sure did me a favor. I never, <laughs> I never saw such an ugly teddy bear in my life. Scary. But in the meantime, I guess the teddy bear ended up getting married to another stuffed animal, too, which I never got to meet either. But <laughs> So I don't know if I'm really a, what am I? A, like a father-in-law or, <laughs> or whatever. But uh, I just thought I'd, and I don't know if this might be not the right time to ask, but did, did she mention anything in the will about the teddy bear? Or, <laughs> or <was laughs> that is hilarious. Thank you, guys. All right, Rita, at this time, Rita Rennert, would you like to come and I didn't prepare anything, but that was actually Gladys, so we had Pete and Gladys, so it was like a gray donkey or something, or I don't remember what it was, but, uh, you know, Roseanne kind of liked to keep, you know, anything that looked nice, <laughs> <laughs> including, like, these clothes. She, she was Miss Glitz and everything, and it was like she, she had such a good sense of humor all the time, too, that, you know, she, she made you laugh, and... Uh, she kept trying, I mean, I remember her struggling when it came to religion, too. Um, and I'd go to Madison, too, uh, her and John, they started with Methodist Church, they went to Assembly of God. And, and I'm very happy that she did find her home in um, Stockton. There were, they found the church that they felt fit their needs and stuff. And one thing I didn't really realize, you know, how much she did love Jesus. Jody was telling me when we were putting together the poster boards about Roseanne turning on the, the CDs of the Christian music, and I just started crying at how beautiful the music was. And these songs that she picked out, too, are just, you know, they're marvelous. And I didn't really realize just truly how wonderful that the Lord is. And he, we know she's up in heaven. We were at... Um, moms, and all of a sudden, uh, we were talking, and all of a sudden, one of the angels said, these little uh, solar things jumped off the window. <laughs> we were like, okay, is that Roseanne telling us something? 
And then we came home, and I, Mom gave me these um, cats for Halloween. And this one kept jumping off the window all the time. And I'm like, Roseanne, will you stop it? You know, it's like, we know where you are. You don't have to keep it. And ever since I said that, that cat hasn't jumped off the window again. So it's like, um, you know, the Lord works in strange ways. But we know she's at home with Dad, Robin, Ruthie, raising, I should say this, raising hell of heaven, because I'm sure it's got the Lord's going, please don't send another treader up here too quick, because I don't know how many more of us you can handle at this time there. But, you know, John, thank you for being such a wonderful husband, our sister, and, you know, Mom, you've always been the best mom in the world. And, and Bob and Marty, I mean, the whole family is just, we're just grateful that you moved back here so we could spend some time with her. Uh, that's it. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you, Rita. At this time, let's have a couple more sisters come up. Rosie and Romaine, if you guys want to share another tribute. Looks like you guys got visual aids and everything here. All right. It's exciting. One could write a lifetime of memories that would fill book bookshelves to describe Roseanne and what she meant to us. We called each other our TYT Day Twin Sisters, which stands for 10 years, two days. Rosie and I called her Sani. I didn't mean to take that off. I'm not used to that. Roseanne was witty, used a lot of paper towels and napkins to soak up any grease that was on food. She loved flan, communion wafers, eating at the restaurant chops, Jimmy Dean sausage patties, Manny's pierogies, my ramen noodle salad, and she could bake some of the best quiche that you'd ever eat. She loved flowers, the color purple, Carmex, essential oils, candles, anything bling, adult coloring, texting, plain wordscapes, which is an online crossword puzzle. Sandy enjoyed Chardonnay and soon realized after she moved back to Wisconsin that she would not find it at any of the taverns in Princeton, like the Buckhorn or the Western House. However, you could find a cheap package of ugly fake teeth that you and your sisters would put in and goof around in at the various shops and the dental offices in town. Good thing Princeton has such a huge population that you could remain anonymous and not embarrass mom. <laughs> During one of our last conversations with, us, with her, we laughed as we recalled that day. That made my heart smile. She was an avid reader. If you borrowed her books, you knew she had opened the book and she smelled those pages. And you would find her name, the month, and the year that she read it on the inside of the cover. And you would also find various notations written in the margins as she tried to figure out the plot or express her opinion on the stupidity of the character. She loved online job. <laughs> Especially on Amazon. <laughs> she took advantage of the prime shipping benefit, and Jeff Bezos was able to take that space flight <laughs> because of all of her purchases. <laughs> Roseanne was very patriotic. She loved the red, white, and blue, voting, and was the only treader Besides mom, the treader girl, I should end up saying, besides mom, 
who could carry the tune to God Bless America. Baby Little John, of her family and her baby, her fur baby, fishing for mother, the sun, and the ocean. But most of all, she loved God. That was so evident. You would find her worn Bible next to her in her bedroom. You would have those little post-it notes, highlighted areas, and notes in the margins. When Bishop Hine wrote, Go Make Disciples, which is a vision for evangelization, he referenced Matthew 28, verses 19 through 20. In his final words of the Great Commission, Jesus said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. We believe this is exactly what Leanne did. She told us the importance that Psalm 25 had to her, even more so after her diagnosis. She sent a text message that said, Yes, I just read Psalm 25 in the New International Version. O oh Lord, I give my life to you. I trust in you. Oh God, that is really all we can do. She would also send messages via text message. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask that you give Razi a good shift, that she would know and do all that needs to be done for her patients, that the patients will all remain stable or improve during her shift, that you give Razi the strength, energy, and freedom from pain she needs during and after her shift. I ask you to bless her, Jesus. She is a child of the living God. We give you thanks for hearing our prayers and for always being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. She wrote of her poolside evangelization. Saturday, March 13th, 4.06 p.m. I'm soaking it up and the people here are all so nice. I've talked to a man from Boston the last three days and just found out that his wife also has cancer of the bladder that spread to her liver. She had radiation therapy, and when they found it spread to her liver, they came to Fort Lauderdale just as we did. I got a chance to pray with them both. Please say a prayer for them. Her name is Nicole, and she wasn't feeling so well today. Pray she feels better. His name is John. He loves her so much. Please pray for him. Thank you. Pray that I might help them. She would pray with others during her, their chemotherapy. She told us that they... Uh, the day that a gentleman shared that he too had pancreatic cancer and they would pray together and talk during the remaining chemotherapy treatments and this was the time during COVID when you had to end up going in alone. Above the front door of the Ziki home and above Sandy's bedroom door the following sign was posted. Our Passover lamb Jesus died on the cross, his shed blood for our household. We close with this text from Sandy because this is the very essence of her testimony and leaves us with a beautiful vision. The Lord can still miraculously heal me physically and I'd be so happy to spend more time with John and mom and you and the family. But if he doesn't do that, I know I'll still be healed in heaven in eternity with Ruthie, Dad, Robin, all my pets and others, and God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, unbelievable things to behold. <laughs> Finally, this is That's for you. you. <laughs> 
Miss Berlin. Oh, Miss Magenta. The Polish Princess. Team Sammy. <laughs> I think these guys need a round of applause. Uh, <laughs> well, um, maybe we could do one more. And um, Richard, are, are you wanting to share today? Yes, come on up. Oh, yes, I forgot that was your real name, Poncho. Come on up. <laughs> I'm like, where's Richard? Okay. <laughs> Roseanne Zinke, my sister, who was the first of the seven Treader children, I was the last. We were 17 years apart. She was very embarrassed that mom was to have child while well, she was almost an adult. <clears throat> who would think her parents would do such a thing? <laughs> totally gross, as they would say in the 1960s, I think. <clears throat> While I was born, and shortly after, she gave me the name Poncho. 52 years later, I'm still known as such. <laughs> Roseanne's story is quite different than mine, but my story is factual. <laughs> <clears throat> but we'll leave it to that. Did you know Roseanne is the reason Amazon is called Amazon? Amazon stands for another mailing at Zinke's online network. <laughs> <clears throat> now we know why Jeff Bezos is building the space rockets to get the packages to heaven. Roseanne needs more markers and pencils <laughs> and everything else. <laughs> but now about Roseanne. She was so funny and smart. It was so fun to hear stories of her life. I know my kids enjoyed it. I think we all carry a cross. And Roseanne's cross is heavy, very heavy. It's chronic pain and hardships, known and unknown. But she walked with Jesus. And now that yoke is easy and her burden is light. Thank you, Roseanne. Thanks for being my big sister. Thanks for my name. Thank you, Pancho. And you guys have such a wonderful family. Let's, uh, let's watch another video here that Roseanne wanted to share with us, celebrating her resurrection in heaven. Well, at this time, let's have a couple more tributes. And so Angie Evans, would you come and share? So I have the privilege to say two testimonies today. Uh, two good friends of Sani's. The first one is from Dr. Ed Fuchs, MD. In all the years I worked for Kaiser, you're the most intelligent person I worked with and the hardest worker. Spending all your times in the basement office doing the work for three people with little thanks. <laughs> they didn't do anything for your health but you wouldn't have done it any other way because you were dedicated to your job. <laughs> Always going above and beyond what anyone else could do, you are witty and share love of classical music. Our friendship has endured for 30 years and it added to my life, Dr. Ed Fuchs, MD. The next testimony is from Janice Salcedo, Roseanne Zinke, John 15, 11 through 12. 
These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you loved one another, that I have loved you. Each time I hear the word joy, I think of Roseanne. She exuberated joy, regardless of what circumstances she was facing. I was always remembered the first time I met Roseanne. I was a young mom of four, and I walked away so encouraged by her joy. I wanted to be like Roseanne, joyful, encouraging, and full of hope. I am often in awe of how God works, and my friendship with Roseanne was no expectation. No exception, sorry. It began with a quick conversation with John asking how Roseanne was doing. He always told me she was in a lot of pain. I told him that I'd be praying. The next day, I dropped a card in the mail for her and began praying. From then on, we have prayed for one another, for each other's families, and for each other's friends. We did not have the opportunity to see each other often or chat over long lunches. We never vacationed together, but over, our bond was strong because Jesus was the cornerstone. Roseanne lived with joy and loved like Jesus loved. Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Roseanne had a gift. She was able to rejoice with those rejoicing and mourn with those who were mourning. She wasn't afraid of pain. She would sit in with me and remind me who I was and help me remember I was not my circumstances. Roseanne's joy encouraged me and her prayer carried me through much heartache. During my divorce, Roseanne reminded me that God still had a great plan for my life. Roseanne mourned with me. Following my divorce, I returned to school earning my master's degree, and Roseanne sent a card with a gift that day I finished my coursework. Roseanne celebrated with me. Roseanne and I texted often. She always asked how she could pray for me. In her own pain and in her final days, she was still full of joy and still praying for others. Roseanne lived her life serving others, both professionally as a nurse and in her social life with friends and family. Roseanne lived, oh, Roseanne was a gem full of joy, encouraging others and living her life for God. It has been a pleasure getting to be a part of Roseanne's life. Though my heart is heavy because of her absence, I'm glad she is out of pain and resting in the arms of our Savior. Thank you. Angie. This time, Debbie, would you like to come and share a tribute as well? Thank you so much for coming and being part of this. What a privilege it is to share memories of our precious friend. When I think of Roseanne, Three things immediately come to my mind. Faith, fun, and how much of a morning person she was not. <laughs> you didn't make plans that included Roseanne much before noon. And I remember one time she said a clock should have only one seven o'clock setting, and that was the PM. She was not a morning person by any stretch of the imagination, and that must have been a real challenge when she was a youngster. And, trying to get her to go to bed so she could get up to go to school. The second thing is something that everybody's talked about is the fun. We could never be around Roseanne for any length of time before we were laughing so hard our sides ached. She was quick-witted and comical, and I loved her laugh. She must have helped relieve stress at work, especially when she was an oncology nurse, because I remember how proud she was of making the Michael Jackson exam glove, where she took an exam glove and glued glitter to it. And then sometimes she'd blow up the, the exam gloves and draw faces on them. She was just so much fun to be around. But most of all, Roseanne is a woman of faith. Don and I met John and Roseanne in 1979 through Amway. And the couple that talked us into the business also talked them into the business. And I remember the first time that I met them. My friend uh, Michelle, who was our co-sponsor, told me 
Now, don't tell them any of your jokes because they're Christians. And that really offended me because I thought, well, what do you think I am, a pagan? I grew up going to church. I was a baptized and confirmed Lutheran. But out of respect, I didn't tell them any of my jokes. And I watched them because I wanted to see if there really was anything different about them. And what I saw was different from anyone I had ever met. Simply what I observed was that Roseanne and John loved God, and they were in relationship with him. This had nothing to do with religion or rules or duty. They just loved God. And I could see and feel a steadiness in them, something that was solid and unshakable. And I wanted that in my life. And it was through their friendship and, believe it or not, an Amway convention that Don and I invited Jesus to be the Lord of our life. And John and Roseanne took us under their wing, and they taught us what it was like how to live a life with Jesus at the center. And through all the years we've known Roseanne, her faith has never failed, not with health issues or years and years of chronic pain, and not even with cancer. And um, it was already said earlier this year when they went to Florida, Roseanne had her daily pool ministry where she would pray for people. What a testimony of her faith and the goodness of God. We are so grateful to have had Roseanne in our life. And Lord Jesus, right now I ask you to give Roseanne a great big hug and tell her we love her and miss her. Thank you. Thank you so much, Debbie. Well, at this time, Rosie is going to share Roseanne's written testimony that she wrote before she passed. Thank you so much. This is Roseanne's testimony that she wrote in July of 2021. I was blessed to be born into a Christian home to parents who believed in God the Father, Jesus Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Especially with my mother, I saw evidence of her deep devotion to spiritual things as she spent much time in devotions and praying the rosary. I know she prayed for us often, but I grew up at the time when Mass was said in Latin, and there were many things I couldn't understand. So when I went to college, I quit going to the Catholic Church. I met John because mom got me a job with her at FS Cooperative in Watoma. He too had grown up with godly parents and was a man of principles. Although mom's coworker described him as wild. This ended up greatly appealing to me. <laughs> anyway, three years later, John and I were married and living in Madison. A couple years later, John had returned to a deeper commitment to the Lord and was earnestly reading the Bible and praying. I was not happy about this, thinking all our fun days were over. In fact, I was very resistant. In 1976, we visited John's family at Almaguardo, New Mexico. To my great displeasure, John's parents Jane and John Zinke had become close friends with an evangelist named Marge, who was conducting meetings on evenings that week. They were so excited for us to go. And you can imagine that this was the very last thing I wanted to do. I was choking with discontent, but I couldn't think of any way to get out of it. And I was not in a pleasant mood to the least. However, as I sat there, my spiritual ears were opened. Marge taught from the Bible that every single one of us, no matter how good, since the time of Adam and Eve, all of us have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Each of us would have done what Adam and Eve did, and that cuts us off from being in right standing with God. No one could bring us back except God himself. John 3, 15 through 17 says that whoever believes in Jesus shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. All we have to do, since our Lord Jesus did all the work, is to repent our sins and turn away from them, which we may do often, then confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. Reading the Bible, which is the word of God, will reveal God to us. And seek the Holy Spirit of God, our counselor, our guide, our comforter, the one who prays for us when we have no words. From that day in, nine, in September 1976, the Lord became my Savior. And throughout all the years since, he has become more and more a reality to me. I can't say it's all been smooth sailing because I'm a human being and I always and I hadn't always been as faithful to God as he has been to me. But I am so thankful that I went that evening and received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. The very second <clears throat> Dr. Kohlenberg told me I had a tumor on my pancreas that was most likely cancer <clears throat> on November 4th. 2020, I felt the almighty presence of the Lord with me. He has never left me for even a moment. Any courage or strength that I have shown has come from my Lord. And that's because I know his word is true. I have eternal life with him. I praise and worship him for all he is, and for all he has done. My greatest wish is that all of you will pray the sinner's prayer out loud if you haven't already. Dear God, I know that I am a sinner and I need a savior. I want to turn away from my life to the life you have planned for me. Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of my past. Make me new. I know your son, Jesus Christ, died for me. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. At this very moment, I accept, confess, and proclaim Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior to live in my heart from this day forward. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace that has saved me from my sins and has given me eternal life. Send the Holy Spirit to guide me and to help me to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Repentance, the change of life, is part of the sinner's prayer. The Holy Spirit and time spent reading the Bible will truly help in that. Thank you for listening to my last words. I love you with all my heart. Thank you for all your prayers and support these last months. They meant the world to me. Thank you for all your love throughout my entire life. I'll see you soon in the glory of heaven. 
where there will be unimaginable joy and happiness and praise and worship as we see our God and Savior and the Holy Spirit face to face. Love always, Roseanne, also known as Sani, and Rosie. Great job, Roz. Thank you. You know, as you heard, Roseanne's biggest desire was that everyone would clearly understand how to go to heaven. And just in a, in a few minutes briefly here with us today, I just want to take a shot at it too, based on Jesus' really great parable in Luke 18. He said, and if I can paraphrase, you can, you can read it in Luke 18 later if you want to, but for time, let me paraphrase. Jesus talked about two guys who went to the temple to pray, a religious person, Pharisee, and a thieving tax collector, all right? They both went to the temple. And the religious person stood up and prayed, God, I thank you that I am a good person who does good things, and I'm not a robber or adulterer or a thief like that tax collector over there. But the tax collector, he prayed privately at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven. He felt this weight of guilt And he beat his chest and he begged, God, have mercy on me because I am a sinner. God, please forgive my many sins. And Jesus explained which one of those that God forgave. He only forgave one in that story. Guess which one? Tax collector, of course, right? He said that that thieving tax collector went home justified before God, not that religious Pharisee. The thief was forgiven. And then Jesus said this. He said, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Or as the Apostle Peter put it, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And I think this is such a surprising parable to many of us because we tend to think that it's the religious people who get to heaven. Don't we? We tend to think it's the ones who do good things, you know? But in this story, Jesus said, no, God doesn't justify those who think they're good. He justifies those who admit they're bad. It's a massive paradigm shift that Jesus gets in our face about here in this parable. God only forgives people who are humble enough to admit their sins and ask for his mercy like that tax collector. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. You see, that thief knew that God is a fair judge, and so he has to punish sin. You know, what would you think if you went to a court case and, and you showed up and the judge had this, this, this murderer in front of him or something, and the judge is like, oh, you know, I don't think he meant to do it. You know, he looks like such a good little boy. I mean, we shouldn't punish him. What would you think? You'd say, fire that judge, right? You'd say, get rid of that guy. We, we want justice. That's what, and, and that is exactly who Jesus is. He's a fair and just judge. So he must punish sin by sending sinners to hell. But the amazing good news that Roseanne was so excited about that, he shared, that she shared in great detail there in your programs is that Jesus himself volunteered to take our punishment for us in our place. That's why he died on the cross. He loves us. He doesn't want us to go to hell. And so he took that eternal punishment for anyone who would come to him humbly like that thief, like that tax collector. And just say, please have mercy on me, a sinner. The thief admitted he was a sinner. He was sorry for his sins. He humbly asked for forgiveness. It's a totally opposite attitude, right, of that Pharisee who thought he was such a good person. Lord, thank you, I'm so good. Right? Totally the opposite. Which are you? Which are you in this story? You think you're on your way to heaven because you're good? 
Or have you come to Jesus humbly saying, have mercy on me, a sinner? You know, Jesus, he was like that shepherd who went and found that lost sheep at great cost, who was willing to give his life to die in our place so that we, that, our, that precious lost sheep, could be returned home to be in the heavenly home forever and ever. I hope you just, you just know and receive today how much your, your Lord loves you and went to great lengths to save you. And so would you pray with me here before we sing Amazing Grace? Oh, Jesus, we thank you for your amazing grace. We thank you that you died on that cross for our sins in our place, that you were suffered, you tor were tortured, that you um, did so much on our behalf because you cared about us. Lord, we don't deserve it. Lord, we're sinners repeatedly. Lord, we just want to admit that right now to you. Lord, that, yes, we are like that tax collector. We, we are, are sinned in countless ways with our pride, with our selfishness, with our lust, with our sin. And so, Lord, we, we recognize that you as a just judge, you should punish us. You should put us in hell. But Jesus, thank you for giving us a way out. That if we repent and believe, that we can be saved. And so right now, Lord, we just all recognize that not only we're a sinner, but we also recognize, Jesus, that you are our salvation, that you are our way. You're the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through you. And so, Lord, we just re reach out to you in this quietness of this moment, with our heads bowed like that tax collector, and say, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, we just thank you for that amazing grace. We thank you that those nail-scarred hands that you have are holding Roseanne for all eternity. And that, Lord, that you will welcome us into your presence too forever and ever through Christ, our Savior, we pray. Amen. Well, if you would take out your, your program and turn to the page with the lyrics of Amazing Grace, and would you stand and let sing together here, Amazing Grace. seated as we watch one more video from Roseanne. Oh Jesus, we thank you so much that your loving hands have rescued us out of the pit of hell. Oh Jesus, we thank you that your loving hands have welcomed Roseanne into eternal glory. Lord Jesus, we thank you that your nail-scarred hands, even today, are outstretched wide, inviting every broken sinner to come and find mercy. 
to come and receive that mercy that you love to give to your lost sheep. Lord, I pray that no one here would miss out on that, that each one would come running to you, crying, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, thank you for dying for us, for rising again, for offering us eternal life. Thank you for saving Roseanne. Thank you for sharing Roseanne for these years. Lord, with such love, there has to be such pain. And so, Lord, I just lift up to you all my friends who are grieving deeply. Even though we can laugh, we can celebrate. Lord, I know it's hard. And so would you bless each, each of these folks? Would you lift them up when the house seems quiet and they miss their, their sister or aunt or friend? Lord, would you touch each one and hold up them with your nail-scarred hands, Jesus. Sustain them, carry them. Help us lean on each other and get through this time. Lord, with your grace, same as Roseanne got through her hard times of suffering, by your grace and strength. Lord, bless each one, I pray, and we'll give you all the thanks and all the praise and all of our love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks again so much for coming and, and being part of this special day. And um, at this time, our service is concluded, and um, you're welcome to leave and, and also just support each other and hang out or share stories as long as you'd like to. May God bless each and every one of you.